Part 2C, Section 1, Synchronous Motors and Their Basic Operations and Characters. And now this is a third part of Topic 2 in the series of Electric AC Machines. And this segment will focus on the most common type of three-phase motors, which is called the synchronous motor. All right, so let's get started. In this part, we will be discussing the construction of the uh, synchronous motor, the equivalent circuit of the synchronous motor, what the V curve is and what it looks like and the torque speed characteristics of the synchronous motor. Now the synchronous motor is a synchronous machine that converts electric power to mechanical power with the distinction that this is a doubly excited machine as opposed to an induction motor. Now we can call it a synchronous motor because the speed of the motor is the same as the rotating magnetic field. Or in other words, the rotor is synchronized with the rotating magnetic field. And we'll explain this in more detail uh, as we move forward. Now let's begin with the basic construction of the synchronous motor. And sometimes it helps to understand how the synchronous motor kind of fits in when we understand what the basic constructions are. So let's let's review that. Now consider a two-pole synchronous motor having coils A, B, and C that are electrically separated with an angle of 120 degrees. This is the stator winding of the synchronous motors. Other than the stator, we have a field of rotor connected with the DC supply. Now when a three-phase voltage is applied to the stator winding, it causes phase current IA to flow there. And as a result, it produces a rotating magnetic field BS, rotating at the synchronous speed W sync. When field current IF is applied to the rotor winding of the motor through a DC supply, a magnetic field BR is produced in the rotor windings, leading to an induction of three-phase voltage EA, which can also be termed as an internal generator or internal generated voltage. We can say that there are two magnetic fields present in the motor, i.e. the rotor's magnetic field BR and the stator's magnetic field BS. The rotor's magnetic field will always tend to sync with the stator's magnetic field and that is the reason behind uh, why we call it a synchronous motor. Now let's move on to the equivalent circuit of the synchronous motor. In a synchronous motor, we have a field exciting circuit where VF is an external DC supply, which in turn produces the flow of field current IF. On the stator side, we have a three phase voltage V phase an armature current IA, a synchronous reactance JXS, a stator resistance RA, and induced EMF EA for each phase. When all of the parameters are connected for each phase, then the per phase equivalent circuit can be modeled as shown below, where the three phases are clubbed together because of uniformity. As you're watching this video, we hope you find it useful and engaging. General Pack creates video tutorials so people like you can learn about power systems easily and efficiently. Subscribe and become our donor on patreon.com slash General Pack to get voting rights on our next topic, patron first video releases, exclusive behind the scene content, scheduled webinars, training sessions, and more. Look, the reality is very, very simple. We need your financial support to continue making these videos. So become our patron get exclusive perks, and we can't wait to see you on the other side. Now, the three-phase voltage V-phase at the stator terminal is the sum of the induced EMF, EA, and the voltage across the synchronous reactance, JXS, IA, and the stator resistance, RA, IA, which provides us an equation called the V-phase is equal to EA plus JXS, LIA plus RA, times IA. Now to figure out the concept of the synchronous motor excitation, let's have a look at the graph. This is called a V-curve of a synchronous motor. 
Here we can see a V-curve on plot of IA, the armature current, against IF, the field current. For each phase, the minimum IA occurs at the unity power factor where only real power is supplied to the motor. For all values of the field current IF, less than required IF value to give a minimum IA. IA is lagging and the reactor power is consumed by the motor. But for all values higher than the IF, which gives us the minimum IA, IA is leading and reactive power is supplied by the motor, i.e. the motor acts as a capacitor bank. So we can conclude here that the field current controls the reactive power to be supplied or consumed by the motor. Up to now, we have discussed the basic operations, the equivalent circuit, and the workings of a synchronous motor. Now, we'll introduce you to the torque speed characteristic of the motor. Now, because the synchronous motors are connected to power systems which are much larger than motors, these power systems behave as infinite bus, whose terminal voltage and frequency remains constant irrespective of power drawn by the motor. Since the rotor is locked with frequency of mains electricity rather than the load of the motor, therefore the speed of the motor will remain constant. Hence, the speed of the synchronous motor is constant from no load to full load or even pull out torque. It's a maximum torque that the motor can supply. So let me repeat this again because I feel like this is a very, very important point to make here. The speed of the synchronous motor is constant from no load to full load or even and the pullout torque it's the maximum torque that the motor can supply so we can conclude here that the speed regulation of a synchronous motor is essentially zero as shown in the figure below this is all for this part and in the next part we will be discussing some of the more aspects of synchronous motor operation under different loads and its application for power factor uh, correction. Hello everyone, Abdurrahman here from Alumiax Engineering. To learn more and to continue sharpening your technical skills, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, General Pack by Alumiax, or visit our website at alumiax.com learn.